Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made a way for me. Open your Bibles with me, please. First of all, the Luke's Gospel, the 18th chapter, the 18th verse. <clears throat> Are you there? Yes, sir. And a certain ruler asked him, asked Jesus, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one that is God. Jesus wouldn't let anybody call him good. No, he said, no, there's only one. There's only one. And it's God. He is good. Say, God is good. good. Amen. Amen. So now God has never, ever, 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 ever created anything that was bad. Now, some went bad, but he didn't create it that way. He's a good God, he is absolute good. What does that mean? Absolute good. There is no bad in him. He is absolute light. He is absolute life. How come so? Well, I'm (laughs) almost preached the whole outline, but anyway. God has never created anything that was bad. Why? Because he's so good. Genesis chapter one. Thank you, Jesus. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now God did not create it that way. There is an untold amount of time between verse 1 and verse 2. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. See, Noah's flood was the second flood. Had to be. Because it was on the face of the waters. So anyway, we'll get to that later. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above it. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters and so forth. And it was so. Verse 10, God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters. He's called the seas. And he saw that it was good. And in verse 12, the earth brought forth grass, the herb yielding seed after his kind, the tree yielding fruit and so forth. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, and God said, and it was so. And then he made the stars and it was so. And verse 18, and God saw that it was good. This is good. (laughs) This is really good, right? 
And in verse 21, God created great whales and so forth, and God saw that it was good. And he blessed them, saying, and it was so. In verse 25, God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man and so forth. And, and he blessed them. And then you come up to the, third, the 31st verse. God saw everything that he had made and behold, or look, it was very good. It was all very good. Now, Genesis chapter 2, we found something that's not good. Well, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make a helpmeet for him. Mm-hmm. And so he did. And Adam said, this is good. <laughs> this is good. Amen. And I'm going to tell you again, God has never, ever created anything that was bad. So Ezekiel 28. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Twenty-eighth chapter of the book of Ezekiel. Well, Brother Copeland, what about the devil? Well, what about him? <laughs> <laughs> Ezekiel 28, 1 through 10. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Underline the fact that it's the prince of Tyrus. Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, and not a God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches, has gotten gold and silver unto thy treasures. Great wisdom by, the traffic, by thy traffic and increase your riches and thine heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, <clears throat> excuse me, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, therefore I will bring strangers upon you, the terrible of the nations. They shall draw their swords against the, against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God, but thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, a man without a covenant. A man without a covenant that thinks he's a God. Now, may I remind you, the most important thing for every born again believer to remember at all times, remember your covenant relationship with God. Amen. Your covenant relationship with Him. Amen. You're born again? Sure you're born again. Yeah. Filled with the Spirit? Yeah, well, sure. 
that you have a blood covenant with him. Jonathan and David actually had a blood covenant. They actually cut covenant together. Now, don't be doing that. That's a very dangerous thing to do because we don't do that. We have been circumcised in the heart. That is a cut in the spirit that is visible in the spirit. That's the reason the devil is so afraid of you. He'll fight you every way he can because he can see your spirit and he know he knows that if you ever find out who you are in Christ Jesus, if you ever find out you have a blood agreement with God, you will, you will take over his affairs. You'll, 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 you'll govern what he does. And there's not a thing he can do about it. Blood. Adam. Red. The man's name was blood. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The first covenant ever cut was when the Almighty God actually killed an animal. Here was Adam and his wife and their little fig leaf suit. <laughs> well, see, he, 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 he was embarrassed before God and he had never seen his body. She had never seen her body because like God, they were crowned with his glory and, and his they, they were in that glory. And the moment they sinned, the light went out and they saw themselves, even though they were perfect bodies, they saw themselves. And it was the first act of a man trying to meet his own needs without God. So God killed an animal and clothed those two. Suit by God. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) Don't you know that was good looking? Handmade from heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Because he loved them. Because he's so good. Now, why didn't he, why didn't, now God is 100% pure. He could not run up. Now, until then, God walked and talked with them. They were exactly like God. They had, they, they were exact replicas of God. Exact. Jesus, the second and the last Adam said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. And before the fall, if you, if you were to see Adam, you see God. But he couldn't just, oh son, he'd have burned him up. The glory come in contact with now a body with sin in it? He couldn't do that. So what did he do? He, he held him off and made clothes for him. And he still talked to him. Yeah, right. Now the fruit on God's tree was Adam's tithe. Had to be. Yeah. How else would Cain and Abel know to tithe?
Praise God. So that all started over the tithe. That's what the fight was about between Cain and Abel. Was over the tithe. So, and you know, you'll, you'll know the difference between good and evil. Well, what do you think if they had waited and then brought that fruit and, and together brought it? He would have said, God would have said, okay, children, sit down and I will teach you the difference between good and evil. And this is your tithe. And now I am in your life. But of course, it didn't work that way. But now, being born again, being made a new creature, a new species of being, you are one of a kind. I don't care if you have a twin, you're one of a kind. Back when they first discovered fingerprints to use as a way of identification, they really wondered if twins could have the same fingerprints. No, no, it's not going to happen. Only one of you. You, you are a new creation. Amen. You are a new creature. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You, you are a new creation. All things have passed away and behold, all things have become new and all things are of God. What old things passed away? That old devil nature it, that, was, that was your spirit being. You couldn't help that. But when you got born again, the new you came about. Praise God. Amen. 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 And that all of that passed away. And, and then and now you have the very same nature as Jesus. He's the firstborn from the dead. He is no longer the only begotten. He is the first begotten from the dead. Firstborn. Now, as you know, under Jewish custom, the firstborn. Oh, I'll tell you, the good stuff came for the firstborn. All of us are firstborn. We're all firstborn because we're joint heirs. Hallelujah. We're firstborn. We have firstborn rights. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the 28th chapter of Ezekiel, beginning with the 11th verse. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king, the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, the diamond, beryl, onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, emerald, carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of your tabourets, and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so, that thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, 
thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Look at this. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. Now there are people that, that, and I'm not talking about bad people, I'm just talking about people that are ignorant of spiritual things and of the Bible. Well, I believe in the last time that God will forgive the devil. No, he won't. (laughs) Because he had no tempter. You and I had a tempter. He didn't. Iniquity was found in him. Iniquity. Iniquity. A sin that's on purpose, knowing exactly what the outcome is going to be, and you just do it anyway. Praise God. Verse 18, thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Never. You will never be anymore. You can't change it. Now that fire burning inside him, it's devouring him. He is not what he used to be. No, he's not. For one thing, (laughs) Jesus really destroyed him. Took all the authority away from him. You can read it right there in in the second chapter of the book of Hebrews. And brought him to naught, to zero. To zero. Zero. Zero Zero times a million is zero. Zero minus a million is zero. So God is absolute light and life and good. The devil is absolute darkness. In him is no light at all. Praise God. The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast study notes will help you dive deeper into these powerful word-based teachings. Get all five days of notes at one time. Use them during the week for your personal study time. Download them free at kcm.org notes. Create a special family devotional time to follow along with the notes as you watch the broadcast. Study the scriptures with your children and begin instilling God's word now. Use these notes to build your faith library and build up a heritage of faith. Did you know that God loves you just as much as he loves Jesus? He sent Jesus that you might be saved. In the MP3 series, also available as a digital download, Faith in God's Love, Kenneth Copeland shares how you can know and believe the love God has for you. Believe and know that you are loved by God no matter what you've done. God doesn't love sin, but He loves the sinner, and His love endures forever. Grow in your understanding of just how much you're loved by God. Learn to put God's Word first place in your life and not be ruled by your feelings. 
Allow the Prince of Peace to show up in your life and let God into your situation. Become an overcomer, the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, all through knowing who you are in Christ and how much your Heavenly Father loves you. Have faith in God's love, put your trust in Him, and see the love of God manifest in your life. Order Faith in God's Love, the MP3 series by Kenneth Copeland. In these eye-opening messages, you'll be assured of God's love for you. Discover how you can share His love with those around you to bring victory and strength into their lives. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. If you're outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Faith is your victory and it will overcome anything that comes your way. And this week, Brother Copeland is building our faith in the goodness of God so that we can receive what God has promised. And we know that God is good and He loves us, but you've got to apply that to whatever promise of the Bible you're believing God for, whether it's the healing of your body, increases financially or protection or wisdom or peace in your heart and your mind. And Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want you to be blessed, want you to live in victory, and that's why they are sowing this teaching series into your life, Faith in God's Love. It's an audio series by Kenneth Copeland. Now, faith must be developed in the love of God, and you do that by meditating and acting on the Word, and faith is activated by speaking the Word. So start with putting the Word in your eyes and in your ears until it gets down into your heart and then begins to come out of your mouth in faith. Faith believes the best. Faith expects the best. And faith locks onto the goodness of God and it attracts that to itself. And in this audio series, Brother Copeland assures us of God's love and how we can share His love with other people. And you can know and believe the love that God has for you. So request your free copy of this teaching series on kcm.org. And Kenneth Copeland Ministries is having a meeting in Omaha, Nebraska. And partners, we want to see you there. Make your plans to come to the Omaha Live Victory Campaign October 28th through the 30th with Kenneth Copeland and Jerry Savelle. And I encourage you to set aside these three days and come face to face with Jesus in this spirit-charged atmosphere of faith. This is a free event, so register today at kcm.org. Thanks so much for tuning in today, everybody. We'll see you again next time. Until then, remember, God loves you and we love you. And Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us today on the Believer's Voice of Victory. For more information on Kenneth Copeland Ministries, go to kcm.org. While you're online, you can also request a free copy of today's broadcast on DVD, CD, or download it to your computer or mobile device. Continue to grow in your faith in God and live in the wisdom of His Word. 2021 is the year of the local church, a year of divine healing, divine health, divine prosperity, and divine recovery.